Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Liz Hannon, and I'm one of the facilitators today from the Minnesota Inclusive Higher Education Consortium Workgroup, or MIHEC. I'm a white woman with brown short hair, wearing glasses, a blue shirt, and a blue scarf, sitting in front of a brown paneled wall. On this slide is the MIHEC logo, which is a navy blue image of the state of Minnesota and the words Minnesota Inclusive Higher Education Consortium, printed in gold and overlaid on the left side of the state. Today's event is being recorded and it will be posted on our website soon after the event along with accessible materials. Today, we are gonna we are going to learn from four young adults as they share about their experiences in college and on college campuses. Because the student experience is at the center of MIHEC, we want to hear directly from the students and let them tell us what works and what doesn't so we can build more inclusive environments in higher education and expand opportunities for inclusive higher education here in Minnesota. But first, I will tell you about MIHEC. MIHEC is a parent-led collaborative group of stakeholders including higher education institutions, school districts, key state agencies, students, advocates, families, legislators, and nonprofits who are committed to expanding post-secondary education opportunities to all interested youth, young adults, and adults with intellectual disabilities from all ethnic, cultural, linguistic, and socioeconomic backgrounds. You can read more about MIHEC on our website, posted in chat. The MIHEC work group is hosted by the Institute on Community Integration or ICI at the University of Minnesota. ICI is one of the nation's university centers of excellence on developmental disabilities. Our work group members are myself, Liz Hannon, a parent and advocate, Singhi Lee, a postdoctoral associate at ICI, Mary Hoff, another parent and advocate, Amy Hewitt, the director of ICI, and Sally Sexton, a parent ally and educator. Next, I will explain a few things to ensure accessibility during today's presentation. To ensure accessibility and optimum viewing, we ask that you please turn off your video except for the presenters, guests, and interpreters. Stay muted unless it is your turn to speak. Always say your first name before speaking. In addition, we will be giving image and speaker descriptions. Closed captioning is available. You click on the two C's on the lower toolbar, then click enable. Let us know in chat if you need any access support. If chat is not accessible, unmute to let us know how to provide access. An ASL interpreter will remain spotlighted. Next, I will offer a land acknowledgement and a commitment to action statement from MIHEC. In Minnesota, we are standing on Minnesota Makoche, the rightful homelands of the four Dakota Oyade nations, the seven Anishinaabeg nations and other indigenous peoples. We recognize that the US did not uphold its end of the land treaties. It is the current and continued displacement of the Dakota Oyade, the Anishinaabeg and other indigenous peoples that allows the state of Minnesota to exist today. At the Institute on Community Integration, ICI, we affirm our commitment to address systemic racism, ableism, and all other inequalities and forms of oppression to ensure inclusive communities. Now I will pass it to Sally Sexton, who is co-facilitating with me today. Hi, this is Sally. Thank you, Liz, for getting us started. Welcome, everyone. I am a white woman with long brown hair wearing a teal green sweater sitting in my basement. Our learning objectives for this event is after hearing about the experiences of current 
and graduate college students, participants will gain insight to apply later in personal and professional roles. They will learn about career aspirations of students and listen and have the opportunity to ask questions. Here's our agenda. Note, around 3.55, we're gonna do a short feedback poll so we can catch anyone who may need to leave early. This will be during our question and answer session. Now, I have the great pleasure of introducing to you our four panelists. The MyHEC Learning Community is sincerely honored and appreciative of the time they are making for us today so we can learn from them. Let's meet our guests. Do we have all our guests spotlighted now? Great. Our first panelist from Minneapolis, Minnesota is Michael Grace, an avid golfer and basketball player who was once seen shaking hands with the former president of the United States, Barack Obama. His image shows a young man with, a white, with white skin wearing a gray suit with a purple tie and blue shirt. He has brown hair and glasses and is shown smiling with his hands on his hips. Michael is in his final year as a transition student at Minneapolis Transition Plus and is taking a class at Minneapolis College. This school year, he is a student intern with Project Search at Children's Hospital in Minneapolis. Michael plans to attend college. Currently, Michael is active in the theater arts and is an apprentice with Cow Tipping Press. He enjoys sports, participating in Unified Special Olympics at the University of Minnesota, and is passionate about hanging out with his friends. Michael, can you say hello and tell us one thing that makes you so amazing and uniquely you? Oh, we can't hear you, Michael. Are you perhaps muted? Try again. What's one thing that makes you so amazing? As basketball and golf, I was from King. Thank you, Michael. It looks like you're going to have to really move up close to the computer when you speak, but we heard you. It's basketball and golf and being prom king. We got that. Next, from Nashville, Tennessee, we have Pasanich Chinratana Alab, who goes by Peach, who is just now starting a hybrid podcast on her campus of Vanderbilt University called Not So Speechless. Her image is of a 24-year-old Asian-American young adult with cerebral palsy in a wheelchair. She has dark brown straight hair, is smiling and wearing glasses and has her hands in her lap. She is wearing a black graduation cap and gown with a gold tassel and the letter V on the front of the gown. Peach completed her studies at Vanderbilt University Next Steps in 2020, but graduated on May 2nd, 2021. Her studies at Vanderbilt focused on advocacy and special education. Currently, Peach is working in customer service and marketing for Bubble Love Nashville. She does self-advocate work with the ARC of Tennessee, People's First Chapter, Department of Developmental and Intellectual Disabilities, Tennessee Council, AUCD, Best Buddies, and Davidson County Chapter of People First as Vice President the Tennessee Disability Coalition and the Kennedy Center. Her passion, as you can imagine, is self-advocacy, <laughs> giving back and fundraising for Best Buddies Tennessee. She is also a cover artist and podcaster, as I mentioned, and loves musicals, especially West Side Story. Peach, can you please say hello and share one thing that makes you amazing and uniquely you? Hi, everybody. Um... I think the one thing that makes me unique better than anybody is I have collaborated with the first time this year, have met Mackenzie's teacher, Mr. Fox. Um, Tamara is on here representing Mackenzie's mom and collaboration 
I think what's unique is I can collaborate with any high school I want to, and I have been honored to collaborate with White Creek High School this year. So I am really appreciative of the opportunity that you can do anything you put your mind to, just as long as you achieve your goals. Thank you, Peach. Collaboration. Appreciate that. Next, from Minnetonka, Minnesota, and currently studying in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, we have John James. He might be seen driving his family's boat around the lake on summer days. His photo shows a young white adult with a broad smile and glasses and short, light brown hair brushed upward from his forehead. He is wearing a light blue t-shirt from Augustana University, printed across with a school emblem. He's holding his school picture ID up for the camera. John is in his first year of Augie Access program at Augustana University in Sioux Falls. John is very close to his twin sister who is graduating from the University of Denver this June. In his spare time, John enjoys playing basketball, following Minnesota sports teams and spending time with his friends and family. He also enjoys his dog, Percy. John, can you unmute yourself and tell us one thing that makes you amazing and uniquely you? I'm already unmuted. Oh, good. Well, I was going to say I have a twin sister, but you already mentioned that. So I got to oh, say I something did. different now. <laughs> um, well, that is amazing and uniquely you. Let's just go with that again, I guess. Awesome. So he's a twin. Thank yep. you, John. Yep. And last but not least, we have Amelie Wall from Maple Plain, Minnesota. Amelie is a world traveler, and before the pandemic, Amelie traveled across the world to China with Special Olympics for a youth summit in Beijing. She's shown here standing and leaning against a fence in a navy blue parka and brown scarf. She is a young white woman with long flowing brown hair and is smiling and holding a small black purse. In the background is the Golden Gate Bridge, the water and fading sunlight with clouds in the sky. Amelie is in her second year of Bethel University BUILD program in Arden Hills, Minnesota. Amelie graduated from Orono High School. She has worked at Trader Joe's and at the Minnesota Viking Stadium. She has also been involved with Gigi's Playhouse and has helped out at Arc Valley Village in Jack's Basket. Amelie's passions are traveling, singing, and songwriting. Amelie, can you say hello and tell us what makes you amazing and uniquely you? I can try. <laughs> All right, I'm Amelia, and the only thing I can think of right now is that I have Down syndrome and I am celiac, and I can do many, and I can put my legs on my head. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Amelie. We look forward to hearing more from you during our panel. Thank yeah. you, every Michael, Peach, John, and Amelie for sharing these introductions with us. Next, we're gonna start the panel questions we prepared ahead of time. I will be asking each question. Singhi uh, will also post them in chat and I will ask each panelist to answer. Remember, you can always pass uh, if you're not up for answering the question. And we have about two to three minutes for each question. so. If you get a little long-winded, <laughs> I might interrupt you if necessary. Um, don't take it personally, just so that we can have each person share what they have prepared. And we will have time during the question and answer for more discussion, if there's more that you want to say about a certain question. I know some of our panelists may need to leave early for other commitments. They're very busy and generous with giving their time with us today. And if you have to leave, John, I think you're the one that might have to leave early. If you could just say goodbye or type it in chat so we know that you're leaving, um, that would be great. Yeah, I, I have to leave at 345, so. Okay, so here's our first question. Uh, question number one, what is one thing you did to prepare for college? And I think I'll start with Peach. We'll kind of always go in this order, but a different person will start us out. So we'll start out with Peach and then Amelie, then Michael, then John for this first question. Peach, what's one thing you did to prepare for college? 
Um, I guess the main two would be one is tour, and then two is apply for colleges, three being interviewed. Like getting interviewed um, was the hardest thing because I had to apply for two different programs and then Next Steps accepted me in 2016 of the fall. So I was like so nervous to get this acceptance letter and I started like crying and not, you know, I was very happy. So the preparation was um, basically the interview and the touring process to see if it was and uh, wheelchair accessible enough. Mm -hmm. I think the hardest thing would have been interviews mm -hmm. and helping other people getting ready for their college experience as well. Good, um, thank you. Amelie, how about you? What's one thing you did to prepare for college? I worked with the owner teachers, friends and family to write my personal person-centered life plan and I'm a college student mom. Great. So you did a person-centered plan? Mm -hmm. okay. And Michael, can you tell us uh, one thing you did to prepare for college? Um, I talked to family, friends, and teachers. I got new school surprises like magic bag, pencils, and notebooks. Okay. A messenger bag? You got a new messenger bag for college too? Awesome. And John. How about you? What is one thing you did to prepare for college? Oh, okay. Um, I started by doing research on thinkcollege.net where there's all these colleges with inclusive programs like mm -hmm. Vanderbilt's on there and Bethel's on there in the Minnesota section. And then I also started doing things at home to be more independent, like make my own meals and, and chores to get used to living away from home. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone. We're gonna to go to our next question. What are campus activities you participated in outside of classes or are participating in outside of your classes? Um, Peach, I'm gonna have you start again on this one and we'll go in the same order. There's a lot, but I'll limit it down. Um... So I am now the current event coordinator for Best Buddies starting next year. So that's exciting. And then like um, Special Olympics Vanderbilt, this podcast that I'm doing every single week, um, working with um, your best friend outside of college, like, mm -hmm. like amazing. Dude and going to like in-person concerts uh, for well, pre-COVID. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Amelie, how about you? What are some of the campus activities you're participating in? All right, chapel, seeing my friends in the build a program, a mean is to build staff. Thanks, Amelie. How about you, Michael? What are some of the activities outside of class that you're doing? I have night, night classes on Wednesdays. I talk to friends and test with them outside of class. Thanks, Michael. John, how about you? Well, here's what I do. 
here's what here are some of the activities I do on on campus. I'm, I'm helping out with the Aggie football team for spring practices, and and basket well basketball games. I helped out with this um, NBA G League team here in Sioux Falls called the Skyfirst, who's a G League affiliate to the Miami Heat. So I was on the ball crew. So, and then I went to a formal dance on campus. No, no, I'm not. No, wait, it's not the Sky Force. It's the Aggie men's basketball team. My bad. Correction there. Going to the Aggie center men's basketball games this year. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a formal dance on campus. Um, I, 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 I did it in real life football. And I went to see a hip, hip, hypnotist on campus. And, and, and then I helped build a homecoming float. And I walked in the homecoming parade. Interesting that you got to see a hypnotist on campus, John. Yeah, I, 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 I tried to get hypnotized, but it didn't work. I was too scared. <laughs> awesome. What a range of activities. Uh, all right. Let's go on to our third question. You all are doing a fabulous job, by the way. Just have to let you know. This is awesome. Um, how has your college experience shaped or changed your career goals? Now, this time I'm going to start with Amelie, Michael, John, and then Peach. Amelie? Oh, hi. Um, I said, I can say that my college experience has shaped me as a person that I want to become. It hasn't really changed my career goals, really. Okay. Yeah. Michael, how about you? How has your college experience shaped or changed your career goals? Um, since with acting and I learned about adding jobs from my professor. From your professor, you're learning about acting jobs? And Peach. I thought you said that was John Linden. Oh, you're right, John. That's good that you guys catch my, my mistakes. John, you're next. Okay, so how has college shaped me or changed my career goals? Mm -hmm. It has helped, helped, it has helped by giving me a specific experience and involvement with with the with, with sports teams, which is my dream career. I've worked with the Sioux Falls Sky Force basketball team and the hockey football team, which I'm working with right now. So yeah, pretty fun. Thanks, John. Okay, Peach. Of course. So basically, advocacy has always been my dream job. And currently, that's what I'm doing up until um, legislative season is over where the coalition people as a self-advocate. Um, I am working with Mackenzie's legislator in the future, um, Representative Harold Love. So like, nothing's changed for, in terms of customer service. Um, I'm happy to be around people and working for great organizations like this buddies. I'm now the um, event coordinator, so nothing's really changed. Okay. You're doing what you were hoping to do. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Our next question, number four, is give an example of what made you feel welcome at college. And Amelie, I'm gonna have you start again. Okay then. <laughs> I said the community, love and support. I got from everyone here at Bethel. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amelie. How about you, Michael? What makes you feel welcome at college? Um, my app, Mr. Brian, and new friends make me feel 
Welcome. Thank you, Michael. John, how about you? Um, uh, okay, give me, okay. A couple of my floor mates are from Minnesota, southeast, south, southern Minnesota, and they have invited me to hang out with, with them in, in, in their dorm, in, in, in their dorm room to play music, talk about sports, and be new friends to me on campus. So you're feeling very welcome in your dorm? Yes, I'm being very, I'm, I'm feeling very welcome all around campus. Awesome. I'm very popular. And Trying to be very popular now. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> um, and Peach, how about you? Can you give an example of what made you feel welcome at college? When I heard that Vanderbilt had a great music program and a great, like, the Kennedy Center, I cannot talk enough about the Kennedy Center. So, like, they had great programs, like, Next Steps. Mm -hmm. Or like the music over at Vanderbilt is so entertaining that if you're a Vanderbilt student, you can go for free without paying mm -hmm. and save your seats in the front row, like as if you were at a acapella concert. So that's what made me feel welcome was going to a show with them and they've introduced me to the campus and everything and now. Like, um, I feel like in the exceptional needs community, college, when it comes to a exceptional needs person getting into college, it's kind of hard to let them fit in. So I think the music is what helps me feel mm -hmm. welcome and getting into like the music programs and being connected with the arts and connected with the coalition. Yeah. Yes, and music is amazing that way. Thank you everyone for that answering that question. That was really insightful. Question number five, who are you connected with at college? And this time I'm gonna start with Michael and then go to John, then Peach, then Amelie. Michael, who are you connected with? I am connected with my officer and questmans. And your classmates. Um, John, how about you? Who are you really connected with at college? Um, my Aggie Access classmates, my floor mates from Minnesota, my pre-navigators who, 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 are, who are student pairs that come to class with, class with me and take notes for me and help me with like homework and stuff. And then my teachers at, here at the Augie Access Program and then the head coach of the Augie Center football team, Coach OJ, or his full name is Jerry Olazinski. He's in his 10th year as the head coach of Augie Center football, so. Thanks, John. Yep. Peach, how about you? Who are my you? sister, who is a Vanderbilt Next Steps graduate, Diamond, who is now on the council Board of Tennessee appointed by Governor Bill Lee. Uh, so, yeah, and then uh, now I have a connection with Ms. Tamara and then uh, the Tennessee Disability Coalition people and all the organizations that are around Vanderbilt University. Did you say student organizations? And Amelie, how about you? Who are you connected with at college? Um, I said the people that I'm connected with here is the president, Ross Allen, and his wife, Annie, and my roommates, Sarah and Joey, and everyone in the bill program, including my mentors. Great. Thank you, everyone. All right, now this next question, is talking about a specific class. Does Dis it have to be in college or can it be outside of college? This is 
you know, we're kind of talking about the college experience here, but maybe it led to some other classes you're interested in. Both is fine. Describe a class that you really enjoyed and learned from. Michael, will you start? Yep. Um, I like my third acting class. Sally or Sally? Acting expert and movement on stage. I also do voice vocals and learn how to speak fully on stage. Thanks, Michael. How about you, John? Can you describe a class that you really enjoyed yeah. and learned from? Um, I've got a, I got two classes. Weight training because I learned new exercises and cardio and some new cardio training. Then that that can help me get in better shape. And then appointment seminar, which is an Augie Access course on using from Thursday mornings. I learned about what the work world might might look might look like after college. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. Peach, do you want to share about a class that you really enjoyed and learned from? I think the best one is transition to adulthood because um, it's funny you ask that. One of the staff members is actually a staff member of the Next Steps program. She's a professor. So I was like um, interested, even though it was a long three hours which is a very long time. So I was like, it was inform informative, but very long at the same time. And I feel like I didn't, I feel like I did, sorry, learn a lot from that um, class because you'd learn about like all the different like programs like ECF Choices, Vocational Rehab, um, you know. And I had a good connection with my professor anyway, so. Mm -hmm. I think that makes a difference, doesn't it, when you have a connection with the professor? How about you, Amelie? Do you have a class that you really enjoyed and learned from? Yeah, so the class I really enjoyed was taking how to write a song. I got to learn how to write a song. And now I, now I have a lifelong hobby of writing songs on my album. And an album too? No, not yet. <laughs> we'll be looking for that in the future. It wouldn't surprise me. All right, question number seven. Did you have a job experience in college and what did you enjoy about it? Let's see, John, I'm gonna have you start out these next two questions and then go to Peach, then Amelie, then Michael. All right, so as I mentioned uh, on the, as I mentioned on the first page, um, no, I didn't mention, oh, I mentioned it. Let's see what I mentioned it. This guy first. I, I okay, I'll just give a job. Oh. So I worked for the Sioux Falls guy at first, like like like, like I mentioned in, on the first page. The NBA G League affiliate team for the Miami Heat, as I said before, and it was cool to, to be close to the players in real games. I also work for the Augustana. Augie football team as a volunteer where I get to interact with the players more on, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. My, my stepfather's hand, handwriting is kind of, yeah. Sounded great. We got it. Okay. Peach, how about you? Did you have any job experiences? The best one 
I'm not going to lie, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee because, um, they're, like, like I said, if you have a direct connection with your supervisor, that's the best thing. Like, he understood when I, you know, needed transportation. He understood if I didn't do something right, you, like, quote, learn from your mistakes, like, every job opportunity. Um, and then if you don't get it right, the, if you don't finish something right away, you can always come back and finish the next day. Also, the other thing I enjoyed about Blue Cross Blue Shield is getting along with the coworkers in the office. Um, because um, the last time I worked, it was my last day, and then boom, COVID hit. And I didn't want to, you know, and he started working on mode and not letting interns go in. So, yeah. Thanks, Peach. Yeah, COVID really impacted a lot of opportunities, I'm sure, while you were in school. And it was before my in-person graduation got canceled, too, so. All right, Amelie, you're next. Did you have a job experience in college? And, or do you? <laughs> and what do you enjoy about it? Okay, so yes, I had job experience at the US Bank Stadium, scanning people's tickets for the Minnesota Vikings games. I am currently working at Special Olympics as an intern. I can say that I love both internships, for sure because I had fun and I like helping people. I'm also the coordinator for all the unified teams that we have here at Bethel. Thanks, Emily. And Michael, do you have a job experience that you wanna share about that you enjoy? I have interned Sip four days each week at Minneapolis Children's Hospital. I have night class on Wednesdays. I like both. Thank you. And our last prepared question is, what are you planning to do after college? What do you want to do after college? Or what are you doing now for those of you that are graduated or Peach who's graduated? John, you can start us out. What do you want to do after college? I want to, I want to work in a sports related field. My dream is, job is to work for the, a Minnesota pro sports team. How about you, Peach? Well, my dream job has just been, like, it's just been happening. Mm -hmm. I'm now a current podcaster and a current self-advocate and a current uh, White's Creek collaborator. So I was like, I got it with Ms. Tamara's help. I got the collaboration with her exceptional education teacher with, you know, her help and everything. So I'm doing it, advocating, and me and her daughter are changing the world by a storm. So. You're doing it, Peach. Thank you for sharing. How about you, Amelie? What do you want to do after college? I said probably something with public speaking, performing, songwriting, and working with people. Thank you, Emily. That's great. And Michael, what do you want to do after college? I want to take more college classes and live a dorm. I want to live 
and important with friends or family after college. I want to have a job working in something like what they do in Star Studio at Terrence Hospital. Well, thank you, all four of you, for sharing your dreams and what you've actualized since since college. It'll be really fun to follow each of your paths. Our next, um, oh, I wanna thank you first again um, for all your thoughtful responses. Uh, Liz is now going to facilitate this next section of questions and answers. We would like to ask our attendees in the audience to raise your hand uh, with your reaction button or post your question in chat. You can find the raise hand option by clicking on reactions on the far right of your Zoom toolbar. Siggy and I will be watching for questions and reactions. Just a reminder to turn on your cameras and say your name before asking your question. So our panelists are gonna stay as long as they can. To I gotta go. John needs to leave now. So should we say goodbye to you now, John, and say thank you? Or can you stay two more minutes? I got to go. Okay. Thank you so much, John. My my mom can take over, I guess. Okay, great. She, she, can, she can do the Q&A for me in, in, in my, on, on my right. behalf. Well, thank you again for um, taking time out of your day. And I know your job and your commitments are really important. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it so much, John. Is that okay with you, Mom, if, if you take over for me? Yeah, that's fine, John. Did, I'll, I'll, I'll call you after practice. We can talk, talk about how I did. <laughs> okay, sounds good. You did Bye. great, John. Bye, guys. Bye, Mom. Bye. 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 Thank you. Okay, are we ready, Liz? We are ready. Hi, this is Liz. Well, my team members are watching for questions in the chat or uh, raising hands. Let's start out with one question I have. What advice do you have for students before they begin or while they are in college? And um, I'll ask the panelists, which um, if you just wanna raise your hand, if you wanna chime in, for that answer. Are we going in order, Liz, or do we? Um, no, I think we can just go, we'll try to vary who starts, but um, who Amelia, wants to Amelia, try? Do you want to start? Because I have a sink here. Do Amelie or uh, Michael or Peach, do you have, do you want to answer that one? What advice do you have for students before they begin or while they are in college? Any thoughts? It's okay to just pass too. Um, start early. Start okay. early, okay. Because if you, I don't know if Tim can answer this, but starting early is better than starting late, I believe. Yeah. Um, because I think it's important to get your things started early. Okay. Late. Okay, thank you. Amelie or Michael, do you have a, anything to add? Can you speak up a little louder, Michael? Yes. There we go. Okay. Um, set up front, take process in your interest. Oh, yes. Okay, sit up front in class and um, take classes in your interest areas. Okay, thanks. Amelie? I have to say, um, always be best to best to know, and just never give up on your dreams. Nice, thank you. Um, Maria, did John have an answer you wanted to share? I'm sorry, can you repeat, was that about what to do to prepare for 
What advice? Care. Yeah. What advice do you have for students before they begin college or while they are in college? Just any advice? That well, as a mom, I mean, I, it helped a lot for us to just work on independent living skills at home. That okay. was probably the biggest thing. And he just was very interested in doing his own research on on the internet. Okay. Just trying to find, you know, he try, just trying to find a, a good fit for him. Okay. Thank you. Dave, one second. Tamara, do you have any advice for upcoming uh, high schoolers going into college? Um, I would just say to make sure that you do plan ahead, that you plan ahead of time. My daughter started when she was a sophomore and we're still going through the process of applying and waiting for a response back. So I would definitely say start early and make sure you go through the checklist, print off the checklist and go over it with the IEP team and let them come. And that way you can, you can, um, you can check off as the years go by what she's able to accomplish that's needed, that's as, that's required of them on that list. Nice, thank you. That's very helpful. Um, I see Karen that Karen, Karen Ryan yeah. has her hand raised. Karen, do you wanna unmute and ask a question? Sure, I was just curious if there was, um, if there was anything that you guys were like, um, that, that you were worried about, but now you're not worried anymore? Like, was there something you were afraid of when you started and and now you're like, oh, that was silly. I shouldn't have been afraid of that. Good question. Does um, anyone want to um, respond to that? Amelia, do you want to go? First? Well, um, and, you, and you can pass too, but if anybody, um, uh, has a thought about something that they might have been afraid of or worried about before they started school? You want to share that? Uh, transportation. Transportation was a concern? Uh, because uh, I cannot stress this enough, Karen, but my parents had to take time of the work schedule to drive me to school and to drive me back home. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's a big, big, a big um, challenge. challenge. And um, coming from, I think, um, beating the traffic too would have been like, you know, the other thing. Okay. Um, you said, I think the one thing that didn't concern me going into college was making friends because I was um, more of the chatty, yeah, chatty Kathy, but social. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Uh, thank you, Peach. How about you, uh, Michael? Do you have anything that was a worry before you started? Were you nervous at all? No. Okay. Amelie, do you have anything that you were concerned about beforehand? I can't remember now so long ago. Okay. But um, I don't think I was nervous for anything. I sometimes get a little shy when I meet new people, but that, that's just me. Like I hide behind my parents <laughs> sometimes, but okay. yeah. That okay. is me, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess coming from a parent perspective, um, Tamara, were you concerned about Mackenzie's um, going into high school before um, the transition, I think? Yeah. Um, no, because we had a transition meeting prior to Mackenzie going to high school. I think what I wish that we could have had what, what, what was available with the colleges was that that transition in uh, your sophomore and junior year, if you're preparing for your child to go to college, so that you still have time to work on it. You usually yeah. don't start preparing your child for college. I mean, you start preparing them, but you don't start applying until the senior year. That's a little late. If you if you get there and you figure out that okay we need to work on this a little bit more that a little bit more so I actually wish they would just extend the time limit 
and start their sophomore year if they're really serious about it. So they have up until their senior year to be prepared more than what's just on that worksheet. If you want them to be more independent, if you want them to do this, well, they need to work on that beforehand, not maybe a couple of months after they apply. Thank you. Um, let's see, I wonder, uh, I don't see any other hands raised right now. Am I missing any? Do you sing he or um, do you have one that you wanted to ask? My question is what or who helps you be and do your, sorry, I can't read the chat. My question, what or who helps you be and do your, like Sally, can you explain this? Sure. Oh, that, that's my question. <laughs> oh, Sally. What, okay. <laughs> what or who helps you do your best at college? Oh. Um, so this is more about who's really, do you feel like you can count on and is really supporting you so that you're actually doing your best and you um, can go to when you need more support um, or you need things to be a little different. Okay, thank you. Emily, do you wanna answer that one first? I know what I wanna say, but I'll say it after Emily. I can try, I just okay. don't know how. Well, it's going to be, though. <laughs> um, wait, what was the question again? What or who helps you be and do your best? Oh, I <laughs> found it. Um, wait, no. Probably just my friends and my best friends, Ross and Annie, mm -hmm. but that's pretty much it. My family, of course. Yeah, support from your family and friends. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Peach, did you have an answer to this question? What helps you do your best? What or who? Kenzie. Okay. Is that uh, your friend? She strives for me to, and Tamara, a shout out to you. Like her quote is go, don't let yourself down. You can do anything you put your mind to. Don't stress yourself out. Like, yeah. I okay. believe that's what Mackenzie would say, right, Tamara? Nice. That's correct. Um, Peach and Mackenzie, my daughter, have a unique relationship. My daughter's nonverbal and has Rett syndrome, and but she communicates with a Toby and she's transitioning into the college, she into the, you know, um, into to the college world. So um, Peach has been very helpful, not only for me, but for my daughter and their relationship is something that I prayed for. It's just phenomenal how they're, they're able to help each other out. And just as well as she says, Mackenzie sports her. Um, Peach also calls her and tells her, you got this, you can do it. She helped her answer the questions for the college application. So I would say, get you a buddy a buddy system, especially somebody who's already walking in the shoes that you want to walk in. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Michael, Michael did you have any um, thing you wanted to share about what or who helps you do and be your best? Um, help from my adversary Christmas and really helps me less have both to have someone with me to take notes. Okay, good. So also friends and support from your uh, teacher, but also somebody there to take notes. Yeah. Um, Maria, did you have, did John share anything that you wanna share for this question? Um. If not, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just thinking here. Um, you know, he's he's pretty self sufficient, but um, I think just you know, his connection to the fam, his family, I think is you know really been helping him get through. Yeah. So, um, but I'm trying to think of somebody at school. He does have a sort of a PCA person that has been helping him a little bit too. And I think that's been um, really enhancing his whole experience, just being this far from home. Yeah. So. Nice. Um, 
what you know what we're going to do real quick now because we have a um, we're going to have more questions and answers um, more time to ask questions but we do know um, that we want to launch a poll and have our panelists um, some people will excuse me we're going to pause here and launch our poll and then continue our discussion with our panelists after the poll so um and we know some people will have to leave at four and then so um hopefully you can stay but if you can't it's uh if you can it takes a few minutes to answer the poll and then um and then leave when you need to thank you singhi for or mary for posting that how do you answer um, I don't I don't think you can answer Peach because you're a co-host. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's for people who are the attendees who are not um, part of the participating panel. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for doing that. We appreciate it. It's so good to get the responses. Um, and then. Should we wait another minute? For yeah, let's wait another minute. Okay. While people do their poll. Great. This and I is know so Peach. great with questions and answers. I'm gonna call him and say, can we shoot it to 4.30? Okay. <laughs> okay, try it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works is, is great with us. Okay, I think people can continue doing the poll while we go ahead with some more questions and answers. Correct? Huh. Um, and I don't see any hands up, but I know that uh, Mary and Singhi, you might have a question. Yeah, I have one question. Okay, this is Singhi. Yep, this is Singhi and one of the working group member of my hack. And I just dropped the question in the chat. But I was wondering what, um, if you can share one or two things your colleges can do to make better college experiences for other future students. Okay. Um, all right. So, what are one or two things that your college can do to? make the experience um, better for future students. Uh, Peach, are you on the phone still? <laughs> How about... Um, um, what was the question, Sunghi? I'm so sorry. You're yeah, fine. that's okay. That's all right. What are one or two things that, this is from Singhi, um, what are two things that colleges, your college can do to make it better for others? that are uh, starting up? I don't know, but me and Tamara might have the same answer. So can you give me a minute? Yeah, we can. Um, did you want to think for a minute or and go? Me, you want me to go to somebody else? Well, the main thing is accessibility. Okay. Um, because I think it's important. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Michael, what is, um, can you think of anything college can do to make a, a better experience for students? Um, have activities to do with questions and friends. Nice, thank you. Amelie? Can well, you think of question? Yeah, so I should repeat it. Um, what are one or two things that your college could do to make it better for others? Um, I can't really think of anything. Like everything's, you know, kind of perfect. But okay. All I can say is that um, we have a really cool um, program 
that is based on um, independent living, functional math, and independent living. Mm-hmm. And important things. And then also adopt an appointment. I, I learned like different kind of things. So all that, yeah, it's been fun. Thank you. Um, Maria, was there a, a answer that John had prepared that you want to read? Liz, I can only answer one more question because I have a live podcast to do, so. Okay. All right. Just hold on one second. Let's see if Maria has something from John. Well, we didn't really talk about it, but I, you know, one of the things that I think has been a little more difficult um, is just the weekend. Um, the weekends can be, I think, a little bit lonely. And so at least for Augustana, um, you know, I'd like to see more um, weekend activities planned. Okay. Um, that's probably the hardest time for him is on the weekends. And the yeah. other thing is just having the appropriate number of staff. Um, I think that, you know, being it's a one of the newer programs, I mean, they have two staff to manage, you know, um, 20, I can't remember how many kids are on the program, maybe 28 kids or something like that. Mm-hmm. So um, it'd be nice to have a little bit more one-on-one check-in time with the staff. And I just don't think they've been able to provide that. Okay. Because they don't, they don't have the staff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Um, I see that, I see that Megan Dahl has a question and Peach, you could answer first when I read it. And then, and then when you need to leave, you can. Okay. Um, And what has been your favorite memory of college? And for you, um, it would be, what is your favorite memory from college? And Peach? Hi, Megan, that's a great question. Um, like I said, uh, music. Again, music changes everything because I've been to like more than 10 Maladors concerts when I was a student. And now I currently go to like one in the fall and one in the spring every semester that they invite me or every time they post and I still have that connection with nice. um, them today so okay very good thank you and if you need to go should we say goodbye um I can answer Mary's question real quick as well okay um, well, let's let's ask um uh how about if I go around with the other and then we'll just see if you have time to answer it let's see who um Michael, what's your favorite memory of college so far? Um, Liz, if you need me, I'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Tamara, for coming on and supporting me. Bye, yes. Peach. Thank you for joining. Thank, Thank you, Tamara and Peach, so yes. much. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, let's get back to Michael. What um, what has been your favorite memory of college so far, of your class that you're taking while you're in transition? Do you have a favorite memory from class? Can you speak louder? No, I don't. You don't? Okay. Okay. Um, Amelie. What is your favorite memory of college so far? Oh, uh, wow, so many. Um, <laughs> the only thing I can come up with right now is that I, um, for the past four months since our, my homecoming here at Bethel, I got to make wonderful friends. And the, um, the president here at Bethel named Ross and his wife, Annie. They have included me in their family and they, you know, they have grandkids that they, you know, find joy in talk, talking and like showing me pictures of the grandkids and everything. I just, yeah, we've just been nice. really good friends. So. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And uh, let's see, we have another question here. Um, look, a number of questions um, uh, from Mary Hoff. Is there a comment and a question about free time and the support that students need to plan their time that is unstructured? What do you do during free time? Do I have that right, Mary? <laughs> It was really more of a comment piggybacking off of what Maria was saying. Okay. Where, you know, it, it is, I think, one of the challenges that uh, students, college students have. Yeah. Um, and, and really any college student, right? Because they have so much more unstructured or free time. Yeah. And they need to kind of figure out um, what to do during that time. Yeah. Uh, what's been uh, keeping me is Google Calendar because I have two Google calendars now because I also own the podcast business. And what's been helping me keep a structured schedule is not only alarms, but reminders or phone calls that uh, remind me, hey, we have this meeting in an hour, you should get ready or like stuff like that. But some better benefit is this app called Google Calendar. Um, it has helped me change everything and text reminders about doctor's appointments and everything else. Okay, thank you. Um, that's a helpful tool to know of. Uh, let's see, are there more questions um, that I'm missing from the chat? Otherwise I was gonna ask um, Sally if you have a question to ask. I'm still interested in hearing um, what you actually do in your free time. Um, maybe that's, Amelie, you're kind of on the spot uh, <laughs> um, for that one. So like uh, what we do when we have days off, Sally, or what we Yeah, do? what do you do when you have days off from basically, school and work? What are some of the things you're choosing to do? So basically, this is what me and uh, this is what we're doing starting on next weekend or probably this weekend when i don't have to go live i go see a movie with my parents or yeah. i go like um shopping or you know those daily things on how to like hang out with family we recently uh had movie night last night so i was mm -hmm. family impressed and you know or read a book or watch a netflix yeah. show like i call it Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and Amelie, did you want to share what you do with your free time? I can try. Um, I do a lot. I do a lot of Instagram and like taking pictures and stuff. And yeah, I um take a lot of pictures. I love Instagram and all that. But I also just, you know, hang out with my friends. And yeah. Thanks. I also wanted to add that um, me, <laughs> Tamara, do you want to talk about the uh, Mackenzie jacket that she gave me? Um, well, um, Mackenzie made peaches. Oops, sorry, um, Tamara, we're, we lost your audio. Let's, um, maybe she'll uh, be able to join up again. I lost you for a second, Tamara. Yeah. I, Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, and like uh, Mackenzie made a uh, peach a jacket and we brought it to her for Christmas. So they trade gifts. for They traded gifts for Christmas. They traded gifts for Valentine's Day. Um, they do a lot of talking in the car on, you know, on the way to school and stuff. Peach will call her in the morning and stuff. So um, Peach is not able to come out a lot. So they try to see each other at work uh, uh, most of the time because McKenzie works on Saturday and Peach works on Sunday. So we'll come up there and visit Peach at work. Okay. Nice. Um, Michael, did you have, um, what do you do in your free time? Um, the, the listen to podcast on my phone and Michael you should listen to my podcast yes 
We'll share it, Paige, so people can connect or follow you. Yeah. Um, what else, Michael? And I like use my phone for test messages and Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram, Snapchat, and sports. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, we have a, a time for another question. And um, I think there was one question we were going to ask about what are the ups and downs of, uh, let's see. Let's see, Sally, do you, I wonder why I can't see that. Um, tell us some of the ups and downs of college. I'm gonna put this in the chat. But and Peach, do you wanna do it first? I'll do it first since I have to leave. Yeah, um, be great. So the ups were making friends, but the downs were not, you know, not feeling like your third wheel. Like you're not being included or you're not like your your head is somewhere else. Okay. You get distracted by other stuff and I feel like that was a down, but the ups were like making new friends, meeting different people from different countries, knowing different languages from different countries, or like getting to experience it through music. Mm. Okay. Um if I didn't have this connection with a uh, cappella group, why would I go to Vanderbilt? Because Vanderbilt is the land of the Blair School of Music. So, yeah. Okay. Very good. That's So music is a consistent up for you. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm going to quick go over to um, Amelie. What are some of the ups and downs of college for you? I have to go because okay. you have... Bye. Thank you. Bye, Sally. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you. All right. I guess I should start us off here. I said um, sometimes you feel like you're all alone, but at the same time, you're, ne you're never alone. Mm. There's always someone to talk to just, or just helps you when you need it the most. Mostly. Thank you for sharing that. Um. Michael, what are some of the ups and downs that you've experienced? Um, I like my third acting classes. So hard to find the time to do all my homework. Sometimes I am tired in night class. Okay, thank you for sharing that. It's a long day, isn't it? And taking a night class on top of your day. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Maria, I see your hand is up. I know John <laughs> would want you all to know that the biggest down of college is the cafeteria food mm. um, and having to do his laundry in the basement of the building. Mm. I, I know okay. that for sure because we talked about it. <laughs> okay, very good. He had it, he had it written down. So. Thank you for sharing. Yep. Did he share an up as well? Well, or I think he I already think, shared the positive things about the sports and yeah. right. Just yeah. being on campus where sports are, you know, pretty prominent. Actually, you know, quite a few of their um, athletic teams did very well this year. So it's been pretty exciting. And he actually, his unified team played basketball during the half of the men's and women's basketball oh, game. Wonderful. So that was really cool because he made a bunch of three point shots and the crowd, there was a huge crowd of people and we got, we got it all in video. So he said it was the best day of his life. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so that would be good. And then just, you know, having time away from Parents making his own decisions. That's definitely one of the ups. So yeah. Thank you. 
Thanks, everyone. I think that probably brings us to the end. Yeah, Liz, I think we're out of time. Yeah. So I'm going to have to cut everyone off and thank uh, Michael and Amelia. Amelie, sorry. <laughs> I bet that happens to you all the time. It really does. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry, Amelie. I'm uh, used to it. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to cut them off. Um, and so you can get to class and on with your day. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your time and insights. And for everyone that was attending today, we will be following up with an email and sharing a link to the recording and the resources. If you have any questions, please feel to uh, feel free to email us at myheck at umn.edu. Also, just to let you know that the latest Impact Magazine features uh, inclusive higher education um, and the ex more experiences. Uh, you can read more firsthand experiences from the from this Impact Magazine, and I was going to put a link in chat for that. Do we have uh, a link on the website for that, or we will anyway if we don't know? Yeah, not yet. Okay, but I thought I would put it in the chat right now. Oh, I and, see. Oh, Singy did. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Singy, so much. Um, and uh, on behalf of just my heck, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it, and especially appreciate um, Amelie and Michael and Peach and John and their family members and support people that were here today. Thanks, we'll see you soon. Thank you, bye-bye.